Today in a preseason friendly, we saw footballer Wesley Fofana go down with a horrific looking leg injury. And this was a very concerning one from the start because it resulted in him being stretchered off of the field. Now on the actual play that Fofana was injured on, we saw that somebody went in for a tackle, made contact with that leg. And immediately after that, there was a lot of speculation on whether or not he did have a broken leg or not. Unfortunately for Fofana, he has confirmed on social media that as of right now, he is in fact dealing with at least a fibula fracture and he intends to update everybody as soon as he knows more information. Since some people may not be too familiar with what exactly a fibula fracture is and the interventions that can be done in order to help stabilize and help heal the bone as well as the recovery process, I'm going to go ahead and focus on that with this video. Welcome back everybody. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and with my channel I take a look at sports injuries and I try to make them a little bit easier to understand and I go into the exact rehab process as to what a person can expect when dealing with the rehab process of the injury. First, I'm going to start off by showing the actual play that Fofana was injured on so that we get a good visualization for his mechanism of injury. Then I'll go over the applicable anatomy for a fibula fracture, as well as explain what else is at risk when a person's leg is in this position. And finally, after that, I'll go over the general rehab process for somebody that has a fibula fracture. If you like this video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Now, you can see on the play right here that as Fofana has the ball, the other player is coming in and he's going to perform a tackle to his left leg. Now, when this happens, we see that that foot is actually planted into the turf and that's putting a lot of force on the outside of the leg going from the lateral or outside portion of the leg towards the medial or the inside portion of the leg. Now, here I have a model of the foot and ankle and so the two bones in the lower leg are the fibula bone, which is this bone right here on the lateral or outside portion of the leg. And then you have the tibia bone, which is actually on the medial or the inside portion of the leg. These two bones are actually going to make the top of that ankle joint. And right below that is a bone known as the talus bone. Now we know so far that Fofana has confirmed that he is in fact dealing with a fibula fracture. So he is dealing with a fracture of this bone towards the outside of the leg right now. But what's interesting about this case is that there is definite risk that there is something else going on at the ankle because of the position that the foot was in when the tackle happened. Now, as we look again on the slow motion replay, Fofana's foot is actually externally rotated a little bit, meaning that it's going more towards the outside right there. Now, when a person's foot is externally rotated, this is actually putting the talus at risk of popping out of the ankle, resulting in something known as an ankle dislocation. Now you can see on this model that there's actually not a lot of movement allowed in that ankle joint for that talus to move from side to side. It's predominantly going up and down just like this. There is some from side to side, but it's predominantly going up for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So when a person is externally rotated and they're getting an external force coming from the outside like that, that can also result in that ankle dislocation. Once again, as of right now, I don't know whether or not he is also dealing with an ankle dislocation, but it's important to say that yes, this is a very risky position for a person to also suffer an ankle dislocation. One other thing that is absolutely worth mentioning is that there is substantial risk at the knee joint as well for being in this type of a position. If you've watched any of my videos before, you will hear me stress the importance of a dynamic knee valgus and how risky that is for the knee joint. Now, when that person comes in for the tackle, it is actually placing some dynamic knee valgus onto that knee joint as well. And you can see right here that when that torsion is coming up through the knee joint, you can see that all of those important structures in the knee are also stressed. And this, of course, includes that ACL. So it's going to be really important that we just wait in here and see whether or not the knee is implicated as well. Now, when a person suffers a fibula fracture such as this, there are several different types of options that can be done to help stabilize that fracture. The first thing that's going to be really important is to determine whether or not this is something known as a compound or an open fracture. When this occurs, this is when that bone is going to break and it's actually going to protrude through a person's skin. In this case, Obviously, we're worried about infection, we're worried about soft tissue damage, as well as nerve damage. So 
If this also occurred in this case, then this is going to be really important to rule out damage to those areas as well. Open fractures will result in a surgery. Usually what's going to happen in that fibula bone is that they're going to put a plate and screws in there to stabilize the fibula bone. Also, even if it is not a compound or an open fracture, there's a lot of times where they will put that plate and screws in there to essentially stabilize everything as well. It is going to really just depend on how malaligned that bone is after the injury. So it's going to be really important that we essentially just pay attention during these next couple days to determine whether or not the break was bad enough to require surgery. Now, since we know that definitely he is dealing with at least a fibula fracture at this time, I'll go ahead and talk briefly as to generally what we'll do for somebody that comes in for a fibula fracture. Initially in the stages of the rehab process, what's going to happen is that person is going to be in something either like a boot or a cast, essentially just to immobilize the bone and allow it to heal. A person is generally going to be in something known as non-weight bearing status for about six weeks. This means just like it sounds. The person is not allowed to put any weight through that area because we obviously need to allow the bone time to heal. During this time, essentially, there's not too much we can do with the ankle. It depends on the aggressiveness of the orthopedic surgeon, but basically what you wanna do is you just wanna protect that area of injury as much as possible. Then after that six week period, what we're going to do is we're going to reintroduce weight bearing again. Generally speaking, what a person is going to deal with is they're going to be in something known as partial weight bearing first. So they're not gonna be able to put all of their weight through that lower extremity right away. And generally speaking, the physician is going to give us advice and will sometimes give a protocol as to what they can handle based on the time frame. This is a very important phase of the rehab process because essentially you're teaching the person how to walk normal again. And then of course, during this time frame, we want to restore as much normal range of motion as possible to that ankle area. At about the eight to 12 week mark, this is when we can start to really progress the strengthening exercises because at this point, typically the bone has shown a lot of signs of healing and a lot of cases it's healed completely. So we can start to essentially tax that area again. At about the 12 to 16 week mark after injury, this is when we can start to get really advanced with those strengthening exercises. We can introduce things such as plyometrics and start to add in some sports specific exercises. But of course, this is generally speaking, this depends on a lot of things. This depends on whether or not the person has had surgery. It depends on the type of surgery and it also depends on whether or not it is an open fracture. And once again, those soft tissues or nerves are impacted. So as of right now, it doesn't look like we have a ton of details regarding Fofana's fibula fracture, but we do know that it is at least a fracture. And so we can speculate a little bit on his return to sport. But as soon as I hear any updates regarding this case, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. Also, if you happen to hear something and you want to share it with everybody, feel free to share it as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Wesley Fofana's most recent horrific leg injury. I wish him a lot of luck in the rehab process because it is a long road ahead of him, unfortunately, but I know he's going to do excellent with it. So I'm really rooting for this guy and I wish him the best of luck. Once again, if you liked today's video, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.